First of all, thanks for showing up today during this busy semester. This will be the last workshop of our whole semester. So today we will just learn about some basic information about how to use in UI user interface by 2D and 3D in Unity. And also most of the thing we will learn today is the bottom click. We will learn, for example, using bottom click to switch to different cameras, to different angle. And also we can open info box, open and close it by clicking the bottom. Also for camera rotation, for example, if you want, to, want people to see a rotated look of your building, you can click bottom by switching your camera rotated from uh, right side and click another one by switching our camera rotated on the left side. The last thing we will learn today is click the bottom to switch the thing. For example, if you want two things in your presentation, one is night view, one is daytime view, you can simply click the bottom by switching the things that you want. There is a sample video for our final delivery today. You guys will all know how to do it in the end of the workshop. Okay, first of all, let's open the Unity Hub together. Make sure you already download the file I have shared it out before. Let's click new project on the top. And let's all click 3D URP. And we want to give it a name. I will just call it workshop three, create project. So we will just simply drag the file I you downloaded from my shared folder directly into the project section. So the unit will automatically select all the all of the components, but it's better if you double check by clicking all again to make sure you will import everything. You click all and then you click import. The file you are importing right now is just the a delivery from workshop two, there's nothing new. So if you watch workshop two recording or you have been to the workshop two in person, you will know how to create it that. Basically we will just keep improving our project based on workshop two. First of all, you will see there's a couple extra folder you just imported in. And the main one we'll use is called a workshop. If you click the a workshop, there will be another folder called scenes. You click it and then there will be a net scene I created already. And you double click it by switch your scenes to the, from sample scene to net scene. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this is the uh, same as the model from workshop two. If you go under camera folder, let's switch it to a more normal view so let's all right click main camera then goes to the bottom align view to select it okay and then we will have a better view right there you see i have main camera and camera two camera three camera four all different angles how we can use the created bottom to switch the camera angle is the first thing we will learn so let's all create a empty game object called switch cameras. You can call it whatever you want as long as you, you know what is the what is that. So an empty game object will name it by switch cameras. And then let's right click the switch camera we just create and then we want to create a new cam create create a new camera game object. We right click it and click camera. I will just rename it camera one. And then I will copy another two extra camera and then call it camera two and camera three. The reason why I didn't directly use the camera folders camera that I'm giving out previously is because I want to make the different angles camera right there as the placeholder. So later on, if I messed up with the camera one, I can still go to the camera one under my camera folder to align them together. The view we are seeing right now is from main camera. We want to align our camera one with this main camera. So we'll all right-click camera one, 
and then select align with view on the bottom. So our camera ones will be seen at the front right there. Camera two, I'm thinking to try a balcony view. If you right click camera two and then align view to select it, the camera two on the, on the top, you will see a closer view for a balcony. I want to assign my camera to I just created to this view. So I will right click camera two and then click align with view on the bottom. So our camera two is ready to go. For our camera three, we will do the same. Go to the top for the initial camera three we created before. We right click it and align the view with selection. You will see the camera three's view looks pretty weird because it looks pretty much the same thing, just a zooming in view with our camera one. The reason why I want to keep it right there is because we are going to create a two bottom on the right and left. By clicking the bottom, we can see the rotated view of the building. So we will just set our camera three as same as the camera three on the top. If I right click camera three and then align with view. Our camera one, camera two, and camera three are ready to go. That's the three different angles we want to switch in between. Now we have different angles ready to go. The second step is to create a bottom. And the third step is to align all the bottom with our angle, right? Let's do the bottom creating. So first of the thing, if you click on the empty space in Ender Hierarchy, there will be a UI button. If you go click the UI button, there will be a canvas on the bottom. All the UI elements we will see in Unity will have a canvas to hold it. You can imagine all the UI elements as the elements and the canvas is like a holder to hold all of the elements you want to have, whether it's a bottom or it's a panel. On the left side and the right side and the inspector, you can see we have different mode to choose for our canvas. The first one is called overlay screen space. That's the most common one people will usually use for creating a game. That's just like another layer to lay on the top of your scenes. Wherever, whichever angle you will switch, it will all be there all the time. And the second one is called the screen space camera. That's more related to certain camera you want. For example, because we do camera one, two, three, right? If we select the uh, screen space camera mode, and then we can drag in maybe one of the camera, which means the UI, the canvas that we are using, all the UI elements will only showing with camera one. But when we switch to camera two, it will not be showing anymore. And I will switch it back because we are not going to do it for the first section. And another one is called word space. That's basically just imagine your canvas as a 2D object floating in your 3D model. Whatever angle you switch to, whatever display you are looking at, it will all be in your 3D space. You can imagine it more like a 3D object floating in your space. Uh, we will only be using the screen space overlay and screen space camera for today. For our bottom switching, we want off our bottom all the time be showing on our screen. So we will select the overlay mode. Let's rename the canvas to switch camera canvas. So we will know all of the elements we created under the on the canvas is for switching the camera use. And then if you right click the canvas we just create, and let's go to UI again, there will be a bottom text mesh pro showing up. We will click bottom. Then there will be some import TMP essentials. You can just create import, follow what Unity asks you to do. You will see there's nothing changed in our scene, right? But if you go to the game view, you, you will see there is a small button created already for us. The overlay mode for the canvas is like that. If you zoom out a little bit and click the canvas and then click F, you will see the UI bottom actually is being created, but it's just pretty far away and this related with our model. 
from the scene view, but it do exist in the game view. And one of the good suggestion for you to adjusting your bottom easier is, is just uh, click the click the this little box on the top to switch it to a more 2D view. And then you can see the bottom under the whole canvas framework. You can imagine right now the bottom is in the middle. So it's showing in the middle with the framework right there. So I'm thinking for my bottom, I wanted to switch it a little bit downward. You switch to game view, you can see the camera switching bottom is on the bottom, but you can place wherever you want. Then you will see there's a child game component aligned with the bottom components. That's the text showing on, on the bottom. It's defaulting by call it bottom, but we can change it to camera one. In your architecture project, it's also very good if you can use it as a chance to name your camera angle. For example, our first view will be far away view. So you can call it far away view. And second one maybe is the inter interior view for your own project. You can call it room one interior view, or you can call it wherever you want. But for today, we will just call it camera one. And if you think the size is too small, you can change the size, click the bottom, and you can change the size and the inspector. I think I will change it to 300. Uh, no, 155, no, let's see, 300 by uh, 100, just make it a little bit bigger. And I will change the tag size a little bit bigger to, I will change it to 50. I think that's really similar with the AI illustrator we're using. Okay, for now we have camera one bottom, but it seems really ugly if you want some better selection of your UI bottom, you can go to Unity, Unity Asset Store and look into UI icon and then set it to free. So there will be a lot of good resource. Today we will be using the simple UI elements. I already put in the website link under our pre presentation on our website. If you click it and also log in into your Unity, you will see there's a add to my asset. It will ask you to open in Unity. And if you open it, you can select download. After you download, you can click import because I, I already downloaded before. So I will give you guys some time to download it on your own computer. After download, you will need to import it into your Unity project. And then I will import all of them at once. And the way we are using it is if you go click the bottom, we just create, you will see there is a source image UI split. Click the circle icon besides the source image. You click it, you will see you have a bunch of choice that we just import. I will choose this one. The, the the thin line one, maybe it's in the middle place. You can choose the thinner line and you can choose the heavier line or just choose the middle one, double click it. If you see it right there, the camera one bottom is already changed the look. It looks better right now. There are more choice you can choose from Unity Asset Store. Feel free to explore after you back home. And right now, because our background is pretty dark, I want to change my camera one's color to white. The whole camera one is more obvious. Since we have three different cameras, we want to switch in between. I have to copy and paste another two bottom. So I would just control C, control V for another two bottom. For the first copy I just made, I will just drag the drag it up. I need to change the number for all of them. Number three. Okay. Well, as you can see, I'm having the camera one, two, three bottom. And if you are not sure you having the bottom successfully or not, you can always switch to the game view and see how the bottom look with your camera together.
There is another interesting customizing set setting you can do for each bottom. You can change the highlighted color to more obvious color because by default it's white and if you press it, it's gray. So I will usually just for making the color more obvious, I will change the highlight color to one obvious color and price color to darker color than the light color. This one is uh, totally based on your own preference. You can change it to whatever color you want. If you lack the default color, you can also keep it. It's not going to influence your further interaction with the bottom. After we switch the color, we change the name and we place them into the position we want. Let's do a test run by clicking the play on the top. I'm just wanting to see if my button is working. Is that actually interact with my cursor or not? As you can see, the bottom is obviously working. You can see the bottom changing the color when, when I'm putting my cursor on it. And when I'm pressing it down, the color changed to a little bit dark, darker. So now we know our bottom is working. Let's all quit the play mode, go back to our scene view. The next thing we will need to do is to align our bottom with different angle of camera. By doing that, if we all go to go back to the A workshop, you will see there's a scripts on the bottom. This is the four scripts that you will be using today. And most of the time for your own project, this four scripts is completely enough for some basic interaction with the bottom. In the first one, I'm named, I named it by for cam switch. We want to attach the cam switch with the switch camera canvas. By doing that, we can just directly drag it onto the canvas. If you're not sure it's been attaching with that or not, you can click the switch cam canvas and under inspector, you will see there's the extra components you just added in on the bottom. There's camera one, camera two, and camera three that's waiting for us to align. We will align our cam one, cam two, cam three under the components in switch camera canvas. Doing that, we can directly drag camera one and their cam one, camera two and their camera two, and camera three and their camera three. So right now our canvas is aligned with those three different camera we create. And there's an extra step by really related the bottom with different camera. Is if you click bottom, the first bottom, and enter the inspector, and there's the on click list that you can add on that control all the actions by uh, our clicking with the action. If you click the add, and there will be an extra action created for you. And then we want to drag our camera canvas under the object right there and the on click and we want to go to the function and you will see there's a cam switch on the bottom. The reason why it has the cam switch is because we have it in our scripts and then we attach our scripts with the canvas. So the scripts is already becoming one part of the switch camera canvas. If you drag in the canvas under the on click, it will automatically recognize the method we just create. We will see there is a place that we can change the number. The number decided which camera is that related to. So this is the bottom one. So we wanted to switch to the first angle. We will just put in number one. For number two and number three, we will do the same thing by click the bottom two and the inspector and the on click. There we click plus. There will be a default action created for us. We will drag in our camera canvas, select the function, camera switch and switch cam on the very bottom. Then we will put in the number by two. And we will do the exact same thing for our camera three bottom by clicking the plus and the on click. Then we will drag in our switch camera canvas. 
we want to select the cam thread switch and then switch camera and it by INT, we will do camera three. So right now we already finished our first step. We already connect our bottom with camera. The time for us to do a test run. So by clicking the play button, we will see our bottom is right there. In camera two, if we click it, it's switching to the number two camera angle. Three is switching to number three. For each of the camera to do something special for the camera one i'm thinking maybe in my own architecture project the good thing is to create some small icon small introduction information for our surrounding building i think that's really cool you imagine it's like something similar with google google earth if you click the icon there will be an info box popped up and you can close it and then maybe if you click right there there's an icon there will be some other extra introduction for other building we will do something for that and for our camera camera two angle is a zooming in view for my architectural space so i'm thinking to create a button for maybe when i click it this small people sitting right there can speak. There will be some audio play out for her as a person to introduce about how she experienced and explore my architecture. That's something quite useful. In camera three, I already introduced it before. I will create a two bottom on the side. So when you click it, the camera will rotate it around the building. And last thing we will learn today is to create another two extra bottom. The one is called daytime view, another one is called nighttime view. So when we click daytime, we will switch to the daytime scene. And when we click nighttime, it's we'll switch back to the nighttime scene we're having right now. Go to the info box part first under our camera one. To just making things clear, we want to create another canvas. Now let me go back to the uh, camera one angle first. We click right click camera one and align view to se select it. Sometimes you will see your view suddenly turns to really flat because you may be changing your view to isometric view. So you can click on the top to switch it back to the perspective view. So just to make everything organized and clear, let's create another canvas only for our camera one info box section. We right click on the empty space and the hierarchy and there'll be a UI and then it's like select canvas. And then we want to give a name, maybe I will name it cam one informa information canvas. So I know that's for the information panel. We only want the information box to be showing when we on the under the camera one angle. So we would like to change it from the overlay to screen space camera. That can secure us to only see those info box bottom showing with camera one. It asking us which render camera you wanted to align with. It's definitely camera one. So we'll drag our camera one and the hierarchy directly to the render camera. And then under the camera one information canvas, let's do another right click. We want to create a bottom again. This time you will see the bottom directly shows under the same view. It's no more something really big far away from our 3D space. Cause we, the, the, the method we choose for canvas is to align with camera, not overlay. I'm going to have a little bit of the introduce for my building right here. And then I, maybe I can switch the angle by maybe moving it forward, moving it backward a little bit to ad adjusting it. The good thing about the, this camera cam canvas tab is that we can move in the bottom backward or forward to having a perspective feeling for the bottom. That's really good. We will go click the bottom and enter inspector, US spread. We want to change it to something else. And I will just give it a circle look. Change the width and height to both 200. Oh, that's too big. I will give it 100, make it smaller. Okay. 
So which means when people click the bottom, there will be an info box open. That's still too big. I'm going to set it to 50. It looks better. If you like the text go on the bottom, that's fine. But for something like that, I will usually just delete the text children layer connected with the bottom. I will only want it to be an icon. As we wanted to show out some information, so we would like to create an information panel. For creating that, we can right click the canvas for camera one again, go under UI, there will be a panel option for us. We will see there's a panel created and right now it's super big. You can switch it smaller by the rect tool. And you can see the panel we just create by default is a little bit behind than our bottom. If you want to make it the same, you can copy the Z value on the top for our bottom, paste it. Okay, so they are in the same. For our panel, like we said it before, we want some text on our panel. So by adding a text, we right click the panel and go to UI again. And there's a text mesh pro text option that we can do on my text box to go this big. Okay, so that's a place I can input some information. If you go to the go to the presentation section, they will under number two. There is information for surrounding building I already created before. It's something random from GPT, uh, just for us to take a place in. I love GPT, by the way. Okay, let's do Control C, Control V to paste the text in, and we can change the. Uh, that's too big. Maybe we want to do our text front size to 45. Uh, it will look something like that. And if you want the background panel to be darker, you can change the color in the, the bottom panels inspector. I want it to be darker blue. So you can change the color and the opacity you like by switching the color right there. So my text looks more obvious. There's another button we need to click create for closing the panel. So we will want to right click the canvas and go to UI and then um, bottom again for our close bottom. And that's another random one we create. Uh, I will change the name to close bottom so I know that one will be used for closing. And now we have it, I will put it on the top of my panel. I also want to change the spread to, there's a cross icon that we can directly use. I want to change the size for my close. For this one, I don't need any text on my bottom. So I want to just delete the text child components aligned with my bottom. Right now we have everything ready. The next thing we need to do is to align all those buttons together with the action we want. Like we talked about it before, when we click this circle bottom on the uh, on the screen, we want to open panel component and the close button component, right? So we need to add two action and the on click. So we will click two times of the plus there. Hold on, let me. There will be two action create. We will drag in our panel action into under one of the blank space and drag another close bottom on the second one. We have to select a function for it. And we will change our function to name object and then set active. For the close bottom, we will select the same thing, game object and set active on the bottom. And then we will want to check those two empty box. We check it to allow the action to, to be working. We select both of the panel and close bottom at once, and then we uncheck the mark and the inspector on the top. So this two panel is being hided. 
Let's do a test run to see if our on-click action is actually work. You want to click it, see the information is showing right there. Uh, right now, if we click the close bottom, it's not working because we haven't assigned any close action for that bottom. Do the close bottom too. It's quite similar with the click for more bottom. So if we select close bottom, and there's on clicked function action space right there. And we will add click uh, to to click to function. When we click the close bottom, we want it to close both of the panel and the close bottom itself. We want to drag the button in and drag close button in also. And it's the same thing. We go to game object and set active. It's the same function, but this time we won't check the this box, we will just leave it closed. And remember for the last button, the click for more, we check it because we want to set it active. And if we don't want it to be active, we want it to close that. So we just uncheck it. After we do that, let's do another test run to see our close and click for more button is actually working or not. Let me click it. There's information showing up and we close it, it's closed. It's that simple. We finish our click for more information for our camera one. Right now we will want to do something special for camera two. So let's go to camera two angle by right click cam two and then align view to select it on the bottom. Then for the cam one information, so we can close it up. And then we want to create another canvas that's specially created for our camera tool. So we go to UI and then we go to canvas. I'll just name it cam to canvas. So you guys probably already know what I'm doing right now. It's switching the method for my canvas. I'm going to switch it to camera screen space camera, but this time I'm not aligning it with camera one, I'm aligning it with camera two. Okay. Under the canvas, camera canvas two, we just create, we want to add a bottom for it. We want to create a bottom for people to press to play some audio and then press it again to post the audio. So let's drag it to, yeah, wait a minute, let me go back to the, I want to, cause it's a little bit backwards. So I want to change my, yeah, I want to move it forward a little bit so I can see the bottom. I want to change the look of my bottom to be a sound related icon. Go under the bottom, the inspector section, and then I will click the right dot on the side to give it a sound option. To, uh, okay, I will change it to Mac. Let me change it smaller. And I will also delete the text components attaching with the bottom. Okay, so that's the sound icon I added on. So now we need to add on some scripts to align the audio with our bottom. Okay, so let's create an empty game object. Let's call it audio. We will be using this empty game object to attach with our audio. So if you go under our workshop and then UI asset, there's an audio layer down below. That's just something I letting GPT write in and then I found a free online AI speaking website to let it speak it out for me. So you guys probably know how to do it. And then we want to drag that audio attaching with the audio game object I just create. And we want to uncheck the play on awake because that feature is to, it means after we click the play bottom, the sound will play automatically as a background sound, but we don't want that. We want to control the on and off for ourselves by clicking the bottom. If we go to the script folder, there will be a audio manager so let's all attaching the audio manager with the audio game objects we just create under the bottom 
we on uh, and on click we add one extra action and then we align the audio into the empty space right there and then there will be a function for you to choose there will be the one called audio manager and we want to select toggle audio the the lowest the bottom one so this script you you guys don't need to follow my step i just want to show you simply show you how you can use gpt as a free labor to create some useful coding i totally don't understand what's going on under this code but gpt knows and i do some screenshot for my conversation with gpt like i'm just Maybe my grammar is wrong. Maybe my spelling is wrong, but GPT, no. I'm just, I write a script for me for Unity play and stop play in the audio by bottom. Yeah. And then maybe the first time it's creating didn't work. I just paste it in and I say, oh, it's not working. Cause I know if I want to use some bottom clicking thing, I have to align with on click uh, action with Unity. Cause Every time we do some click and play thing, it's all go align with on click. That's so I'm talking to Unity. I said I want to use this on click, and then I create another script for me, paste it in, and then I found out the script only work for playing something, but I want my button to be click for play and then click for pause and then click another one for play again. So I'm just telling my demand to GPT and then they will give you some of the updated version of scripts. And if you want to learn coding, it's really also a good chance to, you can ask, you can ask the um, GPT to explain the code for you, or you can ask where is the on-click, what is the next step I should do in Unity. So it's a really good resource for you to use. Let's do a test run since we're already attaching the bottom with our scripts. Let me try on my side. Camera two. Cool, that's perfect. We got that work. Already finished the setting for camera one and camera two. Do something special, the rotation camera for our camera three. So let's go, I'll go go to the camera three view by right click it and align view to select it. Let's switch into that. And then the you guys probably already know the next step is to create another canvas for our camera three. So go to UI and then select canvas. Let's call it. Cam3 canvas. And we also want to do a screen space camera. And then we want to align it with our camera three for render camera. For this canvas, we want we need two bottom. So one bottom is for left rotate, another one is for right rotate. So we will right click the camera three canvas and go to UI, go to bottom. So that's the first one. We want to drag it on the on one side of our circular building. And then we want to switch the bottom for it. Let me see if there's any grip up. Yeah, there's a red arrow. And then I'm going to change the size of it to 160, 160. And I want to delete the text component attaching with it. And then I'm going to copy paste another bottom, just copy paste the first bottom we create and drag it to another side of building. And I'm going to change it to left arrow. Simple and easy. Okay, and let's create another empty gaming object for attaching our new scripts. So let's call it can can rotation manager. You can call it whatever you want. It's just a empty game object to attach our scripts. So this time we will be use 
camera uh, rotator. You can also, you don't actually, you don't need to drag it directly from scripts. You can also click the camera rotation manager and click add components. And you can search camera and it will pop up a couple of the options. So we will be using camera rotator. And right now we'll see super clear what you'll need for making this camera rotator script work. And need bottom one and bottom two, which we already having having it. So we will drag camera one, camera two under the bottom. The next thing is we need a camera that can be rotated. So obviously the camera we will be using is camera one, camera three, and there will be a rotation center. Imagine it's actually work because when we do some rotation, we always need a center so we can rotate it around the center. So the rotation center is really necessary. So we will create a cube and put it in the middle of the building. And then the it can be a placeholder an anchor for our camera to rotate it around that. So we can right click under hierarchy and then we can go to 3D object. We can, you can create a sphere, create a cube, whatever you want. I will just do a cube. I can call it center cube. So I want to, after I have it, I want to go to the top view. So I, I will go, I'm going to drag it as center as possible. We go back to the camera three. We want it to, we want our central cube to be a little bit downward. Just place it in the center as much as possible. If it's not, that's fine. We can always arrange it later after our test run. So if we collect our camera rotation manager again, we can drag our center cube in. Well, right now we have everything the script need. So we would like to do a test run by clicking it. And then we go to camera three, see? Oh, the, I placed the bottom one to on the wrong, wrong place. So the, it's, I have to switch it back. Okay. Let me switch bottom one to the, just replace their place. Okay. Okay. Let me do another test run. I guess I'll got it work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right now it seems better. And if you don't like the uh, field that your camera is seeing right now, you can always change the field of view, change the angle near how far it can see, how close they can see under your camera three inspector section. Since we already have everything for camera one, two, three, let's do a day and night time change. So that's the click button for scene switch. So if you go under a workshop and then under the scenes folder, you can see we only have one scene right now called night scene two. Let's let's rename it to night scene. Let's don't call it night scene two. Let's delete the two. It's called night scene. And then before we copy paste the night scene and create a day scene, we want to create a bottom first because we want to make sure our day and night time that bottom, that switching between bottom is in the same place. So for the place we are going to put in our day and night view switching bottom, we probably want to go to switch camera canvas because that's the overlay canvas will always show in on the screen, right? We want our day and time switching to be always showing on the screen too. So if we click it and zoom out, we click F. And then let me go to the front side of the view. Click switch camera canvas. That's the first canvas we created at the beginning of workshop. And then we right click it. We go to UI and let's click uh, bottom. I want to place it maybe on the another side of our screen. Uh, I will 
Can we change the look of it a little bit too? Okay. Okay. Under the bottom text box, we want to put in day. Okay. And I want to change my font size to 60, just make it bigger. Change the color also to white color. Just make it more obvious. So that's the bottom. We will click to switch in between of the scene. Let's do saving first. Go to top and then click save. So now we will just control C, control V, copy paste our net scene on the bottom. The, the one we just created will, will change the name to net scene one, switch it to the, to the copied scene we just created. And let's change the name of it. Let's call it day, day scene. If we align our view to cam one, it looks exactly the same because we just copied the, the scene again. And the first thing we want is to switch the sky box from nighttime to daytime. For doing that, let's go to window. We'll go to rendering. And there is a lighting option. Under lighting, we want to go to environment. This is the place that you can change different kind of sky box. We will just change it to default. And then the whole thing looks still pretty weird right now. It's because our directional light is in the wrong place. So the directional light in the Unity, you can understand it as the sun. And you can switch sun's angle by switching the value for the rotation. If I drag it a little bit, I can switch it back to day view. Okay. I'll just leave my day view right there. So that's the day view for me. But for your own exploration, you might want to do some lighting modification, maybe turn off the artificial light, increase the lighting for the sun or something. Save it again. And then now what we will do is to attach in our scripts with our bottom. Um, Let's go to the switch camera canvas and go to the bottom we just create. Zoom out and click F. This is the day bottom we just create. Let's go to our scripts. Under a workshop, there is a scripts folder. And the, the script I created for you guys is called scene loader. So what we'll do is to attach the scene loader with our switch cam canvas, the first canvas, the overlay canvas we created before. So we attach it and then double check. Yeah, it's attached. Go to our day and night button and then unclick. Let's add a new one, then attach the canvas with our unclick because our script is, is called scene loader. So you will see there's a scene loader under our function. Change the function to load scene and the scene loader. I will ask you which one you wanted to switch to. We will just put in the not, uh, the name. Make sure your spelling is right. If you want to be secure, you can always copy the name of it and then paste it in to make sure the name is exactly the same. Go under our file. We want to select build setting. For us to be able to switch the scene in between, we will, we will need to put it under the build system. So for doing that, we can just add open scenes. There's a day scene added under build setting. And we are done for our day scene. And let's go back to the net scene. Yes, yeah, save it. We will have to do exactly the same thing we already done before. Attaching the scene loader script with our canvas, the first canvas we create, the switch camera canvas, and then go to our day and night bottom, add an action for it and attach the canvas with our onclick. Change the function from none to scene loader and then load scene. We have to put in our scene's name, which is day scene. Let me double check if my name is the same. Okay. Yeah, it looks right. Before we started the scene switching, we also need to add on our net scene in our build setting. So for doing that, go to the same place, file. And under file, there's a place called build setting, add open scenes. 
So right now on the list, you will see our day thing and that thing is all being added. Let's do a test run. Okay. See? Yeah, it's working. And then you will have six scene total because you have three camera angle on our net scene. And then if you create a day scene, you will have three extra same angle, but the different time. Yeah. So that, that was it for today's workshop. And I hope you guys really enjoy it and you guys really learn something from three different workshops. <laughs>